another Women Lead TV segment brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Berquist, your host, and you don't even know this, Rosemary, your host of Badass Business Women. Nice. And today with me is a badass business woman. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I want to introduce you. This is Rosemary Linden, and she is the president of Momentum CFO. So I love the name Momentum CFO, yes. but there's got to be meaning behind that. What does Momentum is. CFO stand for? Well, I like to work with growing businesses, and oh. growing businesses often need momentum to get to the next stage of business and so that's why I chose Momentum CFO. I love it because you, you know I'm, an, I'm a former commercial banker so I'm uh -huh. like momentum does not go with banking. They're right. like slow, <laughs> steady. Yes. Yeah, that Let's does. review your loan application, <laughs> take a really long time Be to do it. conservative. Exactly. Yes. We got yes. this down. But yes. you have a, quite the background in numbers and finance and mm -hmm. all of this. Kind of share a little bit about your background and how did you get to doing your own thing with Momentum CFO yeah. and helping those growing businesses? Well, I spent almost the first two decades of my career working in corporate America, uh -huh. working for very large companies. You look companies. so young. 20 years? Are you sure? 20 years, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So, she said 20 years, folks. <laughs> so working for organizations like Quest Di Diagnostics or WD-40 Company here in Small San Diego. Small little companies. Little Those tiny companies. Than grow. Okay. Sometimes multi-billion dollar companies. Wow. But I also had the opportunity to work with startup subsidiaries during my roles there as well. So I've really been able to work with companies from pre-launch to behemoth organizations with multi-billion dollars in revenue. And all those things that are buried somewhere yeah, over exactly. the numbers. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm dying to know for you, tell us a little bit about your corporate journey and what was kind of the tipping point for you to say, I'm going to go out on my own? Like, mm -hmm. did something happen? Was there a situation? Okay, yeah, there's always a story Yeah, there. I mean, I think I had been thinking about going out on my own for many years. And honestly, I got to the point where I was just sort of burned out. I mean, yeah. finance is a very demanding career. I was working crazy hours and I decided to go back to school to get my master's in finance and tax planning pretty late in my career. Um, so I was not only juggling a VP job, a VP of finance job at a billion dollar company, but I was oh. trying to go to school on nights and weekends and it was, it was too much. I didn't do it wow. well. I was okay. pretty stressed. Okay, I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, but I, I think, you know, ultimately it was good that I kind of got to that point because mm -hmm. it gave me the push off the ledge that I needed. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd been thinking about going out on my own and, and starting my own business for quite a while, but especially as someone who works in the field of finance, I'm relatively risk averse. Right. You know, I try to minimize risk. And a woman and, on top of it, so you got the double exactly. factor there. Exactly, yeah. and I mean, it is hard to walk away from mm -hmm. the guaranteed pay and the bonuses and the stock options and things like that, but... Um, you know, I really wasn't having a good time doing it in the end, and I really wanted to be able to help small business owners. That's awesome. And, and, and I know you're so purposeful. This is one of the things I really love about you is that you know what you want, you have a standard to what you're mm. about. And I know when, when we first met, and you used the term, because I've heard fractional used in other ways, mm -hmm. but tell our viewers, what is fractional, a fractional yeah. CFO? Right. It's, those are two words that are hard to say together. That is. Saying. So Momentum CFO, my firm, offers fractional CFO services. And so Sometimes that's called part-time CFO services or outsourced CFO services. Essentially what it means is that you're engaging me to serve as your CFO on a part-time basis because a lot of small businesses really can't afford the, mm -hmm. the salary of a CFO, nor do they have the need for someone that's full-time. Mm -hmm. And so by working with me, you get kind of the best of both worlds. You get that CFO expertise, but without the cost of a, a full-time employee. And I was so, I was like, oh, that totally makes sense after mm -hmm. you shared that mm -hmm. with me and I'm curious like for you with the small business not let's say multi-million dollar mm -hmm. enterprises but with the small business what are some of the things a, a CFO fractional CFO would come in and do like mm -hmm. you know to me it's like they've got to have good books and records or is that what yes. you come and evaluate or I do evaluate I imagine that. you see a lot <laughs> I do see a lot so I think some of the main things that I focus on with clients are improving profitability increasing cash flow okay. planning for the future and making smart financial decisions. Because what I find is that so many business owners are really great at whatever they do. You know, mm -hmm. whether it's marketing or being a doctor or any number of things. Pie making. Right, yeah. pie making. <laughs> but you may not actually have a background in finance or business. Right. And the finance aspect of a business is so important. I mean, we all hear statistics about companies that fail, small businesses that fail. Yeah. And when you look at the small businesses that fail, 80% of them fail because of a problem with cash flow. Mm -hmm. 
And that's, you know, no cash, no business. So. And this is where I get in my banking days. I want to explain because, you know, cash flow, you know, people go, well, I go by what's in the bank account. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's so not it. And so right. kind of describe for some of our entrepreneurial listeners, like what does that mean when you say you help them with their cash flow? What mm -hmm. does cash flow, how do you describe that? Right. So there is a difference between cash flow and profit and loss. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, for cash flow, you're obviously bringing in revenue from different sources. You have expenses that are going out at the end of the month. So it's kind of like everything that you're taking in and everything that's going out the door. You know, what are you left over, left with at the end of the month? And there are plenty of businesses that are kind of seasonal in that they are not going to have positive cash flow. They're going to mm -hmm. run a deficit. They're going to have a shortfall in cash for certain months out of the year. Um, you know, maybe their business is seasonal and they do most of it in around the holiday months. So they may be profitable for the year as a whole, right. but there may be some times throughout the year where they're running really low on cash and we need to plan in advance for that. I think one of the pitfalls I see all too often is that process prospects come to me and they're already in this urgent situation oh. with cash. And you know what business owners should be doing is sort of having an emergency fund, so to speak, just like you would with your personal finances. These are the shoulds, Rosemary. Yeah, that we these should should all do as business owners. And yeah. we just don't, you know. Right. So you know, setting money away for mm -hmm. times that are going to be more challenging, um, considering things like getting a line of credit from a, a former banker, like I can like give you. Some you. Tricks on that. Exactly. Absolutely. So that when these crunches come, mm -hmm. your business isn't wiped out and it's not failing. And I think more importantly. Um, you know, what a CFO does is they help you plan mm -hmm. and predict the future. So planning and forecasting is really important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, forecasting gives you an idea of what your financials are going to look like towards the end of the year or sometime in the future. You know, maybe three months from now, six months from now, two years from now in right. some cases. But at least it gives you some visibility to know what's going to be happening and be able to prepare for that. And talk to me about some, I know you've got such great client relationships, but maybe more of a smaller business mm -hmm. where, you know, the outcome of you coming in was what? Like, what did they do differently or what was the aha for them? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, let's just say it, numbers are not always sexy, but at the yeah. same time, they're so powerful to business. Mm -hmm. And I don't see a lot of small business owners that really appreciate, like, you could come in and go crazy, but how do you kind of give what a business owner needs? And maybe what are the outcomes that have been from that? Yeah. So I had a client come to me, and this is kind of an unusual client. He makes high-end um, artwork. And he was um, getting all these different deals and just sort of, you know, setting his pricing willy nilly, just, hey, I think I can squeeze X amount out of this person. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. No fun. And what he didn't realize is that on the vast majority of these art projects that he was completing, um, he was actually losing money on them oh um, because gosh. he wasn't taking into consideration all the different costs that go into creating these creations. I mean, of every his. time he sold an art piece of artwork, he was losing money. Yeah, I mean, oh, I, I wow. think a lot of businesses, business owners kind of like to do math in their heads. You know, yeah. they think they know what the <laughs> yes, they think they know what the numbers are, but there's a discipline about getting that down on paper and seeing it. And so when I was working with him, um, we got numbers down on paper and it was really eye opening for him to see that, hey, you know, I haven't really fully added up all of my costs. And when I do, I can see that two thirds of these deals that I've just accepted <sighs> are going to lose me money. So what do we do? Can you imagine the gut? The, oh, the feeling yeah, it's like a punch in the gut. Right. And yeah. I don't know how you even can kind of do that. Mm -hmm. what, so what was the outcome then from it? So the outcome was me creating a model for him that allows him to enter in all his different costs for a certain project, mm -hmm. um, enter in the price that he was thinking of proposing for the client. But before he does that, he can see what the, the bottom line outcome is. Is it going to be profitable or not profitable? Right. If it's not profitable, then that means that he needs to change the price or figure out some other ways to reduce his expenses. Right. What are those four things they say? It's like you can either reduce expenses, increase your profits, mm -hmm. charge more, and then mm -hmm. the increase sales. So those yeah. are the four. I know. I mean, the two main levers are increasing your revenue or decreasing your expenses. Right. Revenue minus expenses, more or less, That's is your our profit. profit. Baby. And then we have to pay Uncle Sam. What's right. Um, right. Like so Uncle Sam. I mean, there's certainly ways to reduce your expenses on the revenue side. I mean, obviously, generating more business 
business is always good, but I think you just mentioned pricing. I mean, you have to look at whether your pricing is set appropriately. Maybe it's too high and you're losing potential mm -hmm. opportunities because of it, or maybe it's low and you're leaving money on the table that could otherwise help boost that profit. Do you, when you deal with small businesses, I mean, when you come in, I mean, and again, I know this is on video and, mm -hmm. and for our viewers, but is it thousands of dollars to have somebody come in and have a part-time CFO to kind of look at mm -hmm. this? Is it something that is a situation maybe where as a business owner, it's the right time to bring in a fractional mm -hmm. CFO? Like what would be going on in a business yeah. that says it's a good time to bring you in? Uh -huh. Because it's not any small business. Right. This is a significant deal. You have to be right. stable. I don't know, you go through it. What is So that? I mean, I do wind up working with businesses in all stages. I mean, some mm -hmm. that are new and have recently launched and maybe didn't put together that business plan and the financial plan that they should have. Right. Um, the majority of my clients though have been established for several years and they've reached a point where they either need help with some specific problems that they just don't know how to address on their own. You know, mm -hmm. they've got something that's really keeping them up at night. I spoke to a prospect. Well, that's a mini list. Yeah. That's like a whole list, not mini small, mini big. I spoke with a prospect this morning and he was saying that, you know, he probably spends about 30 minutes to an hour on his finances every day for the business, but all the rest of his free time is taken up by him being stressed about them. Mm -hmm. And so that's not what we want. So um, I do tend to work with businesses that have grown to a point where they need some help figuring out what to do next. You know, um, you know, they may consider taking on a new client that would cause them to need to expand to a new office location, hire new employees, right. things like that. And while you can kind of do some back of the envelope math and say, okay, my rent's going to increase by this much and I'm going to pay so-and-so this salary, that's not all there is to it, especially with hiring because, you know, you might think, okay, I'm going to hire an employee, I'm going to pay that person a $100,000 salary. It's going to cost me a hundred thousand dollars a year well <clears throat> mm -hmm. I had such a thought but it's like I know in the last couple of years so many small business owners were a little bit taken aback because uh -huh. the minimum wage is increasing every year yes. in the state of California I'm like what again I mean it's over five years this is yes. going to do this so I mean to some businesses that rely on the kind of minimum wage employee mm -hmm. that's been a big deal it's a game changer but then guess what not only because that's happened but then their expenses are going up with their vendors because they've you know right. stuff runs downhill and I could say a word for it but yeah you know what I'm yeah. And so, like, what would be some tips you would give? Oh, so some small business owners. I'm so sorry, I hit my mic. I'm just going to go there. It's like, ding. Um, what would be a couple of tips you could give in the short amount of time we have that maybe business owners could be aware of, um, of what to, like, be better financially and fiscally fit for their business? Mm -hmm. I think the number one thing that I say over and over is to know your numbers. Um, so many business owners, even when they have bookkeepers that are managing this for them um, day in and day out, they're not looking at their financial reports at the end of the month. And so they're really unaware of mm -hmm. what their profit or loss may have been for a given month, how much cash they may have burned through, even things like expenses. I mean, I think we all sometimes sign up for kind of recur recurring subscription services. That, and then you don't know. Yeah, yeah at some point you don't use it anymore, but right. yet you're still paying for right. it. And I just use that as one small example. I think the bigger point is that when you're not looking at this stuff, if you're or you're not engaging someone to do it for you mm -hmm. and help you through it, that there are all sorts of missed opportunities and all right. sorts of potential pitfalls. So um, I think Good that's advice. my number one tip is to really know your numbers Numbers. If you don't understand an income statement or a balance sheet or a cash flow statement, that's all fine. Um, but engage someone to help you because we Love all that. just have our different areas of expertise. You know, I'm not the best marketer, and so I know my limits. I could try to create all my marketing materials myself, but it would take me forever, and they really probably wouldn't point. look that good. Um, so should I pay someone to do it? Well, if I can afford it, yes. I mean, I think a lot of people go, no, I just can't afford it. I can't afford to pay anyone. But time is money too, Absolutely. right? So if I spend eight hours creating a marketing piece that it would have taken an hour for someone else to do, it's probably not a good you use of my time. You just are so much about cost benefit. I am, I That's am where you go. That. Yeah. But you know, it's interesting. There's another piece I've seen with business owners too, and it's that it's sometimes like they're embarrassed because oh, they yes. don't know their numbers. Yes. It's like it's not an embarrassing thing. You know, technically, well, again, Paul, well, you know how to make pies, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you know, you know how to do what you do. But the marketing and the finance piece, it's like there's just that 
shame a little bit. I'm like, get over there it. There is. You know? No, you're, that's such a good point. I mean, that is something I have to be really aware of when talking yeah. with prospects and clients that there is shame around money. Um, and if your business is not doing well, you can feel kind of like a failure. And that's yeah. not necessarily no. the case. You're you there just, to support and yeah, help. Yeah, you right? just need some yeah. help to get back on track. You know, just mm -hmm. as if you were sick, you would go see a doctor and help them get yeah. you back on track. Like, ask for help. That's it's it. not about being sick, it's about being well. And it's about financially being well. well is a exactly. big thing. Do you also, I mean, for you, uh, and we've only got like a couple of seconds <laughs> left, but you know, in, in the world of numbers, it's like, mm -hmm. is there something you can kind of leave so our viewers feel kind of a little bit inspired, like they can do it? I know Hire You is it. It's like <laughs> Rosemary Linden, she's amazing and wonderful. I mean, pricing, I want to have you back and talk about, you know, some standards on pricing, but what mm -hmm. can you leave us with that will just blow our minds. Blow our minds. You just go, all you have to do is go one. I don't know. I mean, Numbers. I think it's so simple. Just just pay attention. You know, yeah. be aware of what's going on. Don't allow, you know, your bookkeeper to just be operating in the dark and not giving you information. Um, take the time to really know your numbers. Again, I think that's that's really the number one thing that I can leave you with is don't neglect it because you don't want to get in a situation where yeah. it's it's too late to recover. I mean, I, a lot of what I do is forward looking and helping people get to the place they want right. to go and help them grow profitably. It's all good. That's awesome. My gosh, you're Applause, <laughs> awesome sauce. Thank you. I want to thank you for being our featured guest today, and I want to thank all of our viewers for being here and watching Women Lead TV. We'll be back for another show segment, and we will blow your mind every time you come. And thank you for being our badass businesswomen today. So we'll see you on the next show. Thanks.